TogiNet Radio has partnered with one of the largest travel booking engines in the world to offer savings of 15 to 30 percent or even more. I give you the opportunity to go look at their hotel fees and take advantage of their cost savings. Please go to www.bestradiotravel.com. Check them out. I think you'll be pleased. Welcome to Second Win with Joyce Buford, a program for and about women. Joyce Buford is a certified coach and motivational speaker who has a passion for helping women who need a second win. She is the author of the Amazon bestseller, Effortless Happiness, How to Find Your Voice and Finally Ask for What You Really Want. She studied directly with her mentor, Jack Canfield, and is a fully certified coach in his program. Also, she has served as an assistant in his training programs. Through her study with many prestigious coaches and mentors, she has created a powerful program that has positively impacted thousands of people. On today's program, Joyce and her guests will help you to get your second wind. Now here's your host, Joyce Buford. Welcome. I'm so glad to have you here today. As you know, second wind is about transitions. Those things that we all go through that really change our lives, that make us go in a different direction, if you will. And when I was going through my different direction or transition, which for me was a divorce, but it's many things as you will hear today by my guest. And, and when you go through those times, I felt, wouldn't it be great to have a a program that supported and told about the marvelous accomplishments that can be achieved after going through what we might call life shattering, life changing transition. So I am so glad that you're here today because our guest is going to show, tell us, share with us today her life-changing transition and how it just turned her in a different direction and the magnificence of what she has created. So get comfortable as I introduce you to Jennifer Crisp. Jennifer Crisp is a registered nurse and a certified whole health educator with a specialty in nutrition. She is also a speaker and the founder of A Bridge to Wholeness. Her passion for health and wellness came about as a result of many years of suffering from migraines, fatigue, and chronic pain until she finally diagnosed, was finally diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease in 2012 by a licensed naturopathic physician. Her greatest passion and purpose is to educate, and she does this by encouraging health care providers to bridge the gap between the traditional Western practice of medicine and the world of holistic alternative medicine at the intersection of health and wellness. I like that so much, Jennifer. Now, Jennifer is also the host of her own podcast called The Bridge of Wholeness, where she shares her knowledge and experience as a registered nurse and a whole health educator to help people realize that they are the center of their own health, healing, and wellness. You can find her podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. Now, I want to tell you the softer side of Jennifer, the other side of Jennifer, because we all have our sides, and I love this so much. We just had such a good time talking about it, but she's a trained singer, and she has performed as a soloist with the Baltimore-based choral group, the Charleston Chorale. She's a very accomplished singer, and she's even helped others in training and helping them. Now, I don't want to overlook that she loves to sew and has um, a whole another side to her there. But she is also a wife of 37 years, a mother of three adult men, 
and a grandmother to five children. So I welcome Jennifer Crisp to the show. Hey, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. It's so nice to be on your show, and what an honor it is. I really I really sounded good there, didn't I? You did. <laughs> I'm just amazed. You're, you're a very talented, oh. gifted woman. Oh, it's, you don't often hear your own uh, accolades read out loud to you, so that was quite an honor, really. <laughs> um, I'm laughing about it, though, because, you know, we all have so many sides, right? Uh-huh. We all do. Yeah. Well, you know, the singing is is my one of my passions. It's how I relax. It's how I really ground myself. And so I go to choir practice every Wednesday night and sing in a church choir. And so yeah. we have done some guest appearances over the years. And and it, I, but I'm not a soloist, Jennifer. <laughs> That's, but, that, uh, that makes no difference at all because <laughs> singing inside a community uh-huh. allows connection, and connection is almost everything. Connection inside community is yeah. is what it's all about for your health yeah. and your wellness. Yeah. Oh, it is. Mm-hmm. It's a very important part of my weekly uh, routine. You know, to be yeah. at that it's practice. Self, it's self care. It is self care. Yeah. It is. It really yeah. is. You know, one of yeah. the things I always like to ask my guests is how they made their transition, what their, I, I call it defining moment. And as you and I visited, there are many defining moments, but there's usually one that kind of sticks out a little bit taller than the others. And, uh-huh. and so what was that defining moment for you where you changed the direction of your life? Well, I think for me, obviously, the uh, the diagnosis of the Lyme disease was mm-hmm. paramount in me shifting direction because whenever you're faced with any type of disease process or something in your life that just hits you, you, you have two choices. You either go into total denial or you deal with it. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, most of us deal with it. And those of us who are in denial, it it catches up sooner or later. But Mm -hmm. the Lyme, yes, because it had taken so many years for me to get diagnosed. That was was the biggest problem. I was sick for so long, and nobody could figure it out. And you would think me being a nurse would Mm -hmm. know how to figure this out, but I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I could not. Well, you had been a nurse for... How many years? Several years. It was about, uh, I did, I worked on the step-down unit at the local community hospital. I was a cardiac nurse for about eight years. And then mm. I I had to leave there because I got sick and I could not physically keep up anymore. And so I transitioned into becoming a home health nurse, thinking mm-hmm. that that pace would be more doable but it really had its own challenges because when you go into somebody's home and you have to mm-hmm. change bandages or that, you have to get down on the floor. You're, you're, you don't have a hospital bed to deal with. And it just, it was not my thing either. Uh-huh. So that's when I really uh, thought, okay, let me look into going back to school to get some other type of certification to see if I can um, – you know, keep my nursing, but use it in a different way. And that's when I went into uh, whole health education, which mm-hmm. in itself was was quite a bit of work. But, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh, I just loved it. I loved it, loved it. It was fabulous. So but that how was, about two and a half how was years. that different yeah. from working as an RN that you because went in? I know the we- an, wholeness. Yeah, we, when you work as an RN, it's so physically demanding. Um, Uh You know, you are, I averaged hmm, walking six to eight miles in a 12-hour shift. That didn't include the 50 to 75 phone calls I would get, not the ones that I made. Um, Uh And, of course, all the mental challenge of it. And when you're working in either intensive care or some type of step-down unit, these people are sick. 
And yes. so you, you have to be on your toes all the time. It's very mentally challenging and it's emotionally and spiritually challenging. Um, oh, I these people's too. lives, you know, they're depending on you. Uh-huh. You are, nurses are the first line of defense. Yes. They really are. And many, many nurses um, almost end up being the, an interpreter for the doctor in some way. I mean, they yeah, are the we, key, we do. key connection. <laughs> You know? They are. We are the connection. We are that person who really advocates for the patient mm-hmm. and works diligently to make sure that they get what they need. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a lot of work, but it's, of course it's very worthwhile. But I got to the point where um, once I really started getting ill and could not get better, I just, I just couldn't do it anymore. I just physically couldn't keep up. Mm-hmm. So the Lyme is very um, debilitating. Yeah. What least. were some of the symptoms that you were, you were experiencing um, as the disease well, continued to grow or yeah, develop? I think that, okay, so I worked uh, as a nurse for eight years, and then when I got sick, it took me another five years to get diagnosed. So think about that. Oh, that's, that's a long time. Okay, five five more years. I struggled to figure out what was going on. So the initial symptoms when I really got sick from this were um, terrible fatigue, the the type uh-huh. of fatigue where you just feel like you have lead in your feet and your legs, and you you can't move. It's like walking through thick mud, and oh. everything is heavy. It's it's just so heavy. And the brain fog, of course, was terrible. Like, I I wouldn't even know or remember where I was going. I, I would uh-huh. be in the car and I'd be like, okay, where am I going? What am I doing? And then it was uh, the low-grade fever. I had a low-grade fever that was extremely persistent for months, several months. It just wouldn't let up. I also, uh, obviously, had gone to the doctors, my family doctor, and I had very elevated liver enzymes. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, your normal liver enzymes are, you know, supposed to be, I believe, in the 40s. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's a range in there. Mine were in, I don't know, 800, 900. I mean, they were way, way off the charts. And the, my family physician, who I've been to for years, he finally said to me one day, are you, are you drinking? Because these, <laughs> these numbers are equivalent to somebody who's really taking in a lot of alcohol. And I just looked at him and I said, no. I said, no, I'm not. And I wasn't. I really, <laughs> you know, I would have an occasional glass of wine, but that was about it. And uh, the pain, the joint pain is quite unbelievable. So when I would wake up in the morning, I would lay in bed and I would actually say a little prayer Mm. and ask for guidance to get out of bed without crumbling to the floor. The pain in my ankles and feet and hips and knees was just so bad that I just would think, okay, and I would do little stretching exercises and I would move around a bit and then I would tentatively put my feet on the floor and I'd say, okay, I can do this. I can, I can get myself to the bathroom. Uh, I can do this. And that's how, that's how my life was. That's how it was now, and the headache. Now, were you trying to uh, um, work at this time is also? Oh yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. I was working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was very, very challenging. So, Think about that when you're there and then you come home and you're just, you know, you, that's the thing with Lyme. You look fine. You look okay. Mm-hmm. And that's the, probably one of the most insidious things about it because nobody really knows that you're going through this. And after mm-hmm. a while, when you've been dealing with something chronic like that for years, you kind of think it's normal. Mm-hmm. You just go, mm-hmm. oh, maybe this is what life is supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, true. I, I, you, yeah, that's it, no, yeah. it really. I, I, it's <laughs> like it's like a it's like this you know this insidious little thing that just keeps building and building over time. Yes. So, um, 
yeah, so it was it, it was definitely very challenging. Yes, you are and, so right. As we age, which we do every year, we age another year. We tend to think, absolutely. oh, this is normal for us to slow down. This is normal for us to forget. This is normal, and and we just deal with it. Yes, we yes. we just don't question it as much. Because no, everybody around us is doing the same stuff. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's not supposed to be that way. I mean, yes, we, you know, we're not twenty, we're not eighteen, right. obviously. Right. But mm -hmm. we should not be dealing with chronic pain all the time. If you're mm -hmm. dealing with chronic pain, something is wrong deep down. There's some some type of disease process going on. That is at, we call it, beneath the level of pain. What, well, beneath the level of, of knowing. We call this, it, this is pain at the cellular level. So when we have acute pain, when the pain comes to the surface and we're dealing with it, we call that acute pain because we know it's there. It's, it's, it's there. It's, it's screaming at us. It's time to do something. Mm -hmm. But before it gets to that level, it's already at the cellular level. Mm -hmm. It's been there for yeah. a long time. It's called inflammation, right? And yeah. it's inflammation at the cellular level. And the, the Lyme bacteria is is quite a little bugger. Yeah. It's, so it's, when uh, you just when you first were realizing or you were introduced to a naturopath, correct? And that's how <laughs> life yes. started changing. Am I saying this right or wrong? That's that's the Life. transition that you went through, correct? Yes, it is. Because when the the first time I went to the natural path, believe it or not, was the year before he actually well, he told me I, I got diagnosed in two thousand twelve officially, but I had seen him and actually for a short visit in two thousand eleven. A mm -hmm. good friend of mine was a nurse and she was working for him and she was a holistic nurse and I had actually met her when I did uh home health. Mm. So I went in. She said, oh, come in. Let him check you over. He <laughs> told me in the visit that you have Lyme disease. And, you know, I sat there and said to myself, this guy is a complete quack. <laughs> he has no clue what he's talking about. He's in holistic medicine. What does he know? I'm a nurse. I'm in Western medicine. I know. Yeah. And that's where our ego gets in the way, right? Yes. Our ego comes into play. So a year later... This same friend had fallen and broke her foot and her ankle. And she called oh. me on the phone and she said, any possibility you can fill in for me? At the time, I was not working anymore at the hospital because I could not. I just could not do it. Yeah. And I was in the middle of the whole health education. Actually, I just finished. Uh, I had also um, buried my mother. Uh, in 2010, who suffered from pancreatic cancer for 15 mm -hmm. months before she passed. Mm -hmm. And I stepped into the office and started working. And I thought, you know, while I'm here, I'm, I'm going to have a talk with him to see what's wrong with me. I, I'm going to see if he can figure this out. He did the blood work, which is mm -hmm. a different type of blood work than the typical, we call it the Western blot blood test that you go into the regular doctor and mm -hmm. they do that to see if you have Lyme. It came mm -hmm. back and um, I have, we went through Igenix, I believe. They do, they look at different bands on the blood test. He came oh. into the office and he said to me, Jennifer, have you looked at your results? And I said, no, I, I'm, I've just been really busy. Mind you, the day that he told me this, the pain was so bad in my body. And I remember the headache was very, very severe. Mm -hmm. And he said, I have been treating people for over 10 years with Lyme disease. I've never seen anybody as bad as you. I don't know how you're standing up. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, that moment, I felt like a great weight had been just dropped from me. Because an answer. I had, you got an answer. I, I got the answer. And, of course, being in the medical field, you want evidence. You want oh, it to be evidence-based. Okay. So that 
was so important for me. And I just stood there and I just, it, it was like this moment of just, oh my gosh, I'm going to get help. I'm going to get well. Uh-huh. And that's when everything began to shift. And I have to say, back in 2012, when I got diagnosed, you have to understand, at that time, Lyme was still considered a kind of a fake disease. The CDC uh- had not recognized it yet. Yeah. So I was in that you know, realm of Lyme disease victims that were considered a little crazy. <laughs> so so yeah. you ha- I had that to deal with. I had that yeah. to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. How, how difficult that must have been. Thing. You realize it the was. pain is very real, and yet... Oh, it was. Yeah. You're discounted as having the disease almost. And, and think about it. You're a nurse. And you're oh. So here, yes. face it. So here you are. Okay, when we look at patients and say, "Oh, they must be crazy or whatever," <laughs> you can't do that. I don't mm-hmm. care who you are, and what field you're in. If somebody's telling you they are in pain, then their perception is correct. They are in pain. Mm-hmm. Whether that pain is physical, or emotional, or spiritual, makes no difference. Pain is pain. Uh-huh. So it was a real it was a real awakening for me because uh-huh. I had gotten my whole health uh, education certification and all of this just everything just came full circle. And mm. everything I had learned as a whole health educator, which really stresses the physical, nutritional, emotional, environmental, and spiritual aspects of our health and wellness, it really came full circle. And I thought, wow, I better do something or Mm -hmm. I'm going to be in a wheelchair in the next two years. Wow. And so I began, I began the treatment. Yeah. But when did you decide to become a certified hold health educator? Well, I did that after I left the hospital. So I left the hospital in July of 2008. Yeah. Um, and I went on an interview to get accepted into the National Institute of Whole Health, uh-huh. which is out of Wellesley, Massachusetts. I was accepted into the program. I did it because I knew intuitively, <laughs> I don't know how to put it, that, <laughs> that this was going to be the answer or the road where I would find the answers to my own health issues. Mm-hmm. And what it did was it allowed me to open myself up to the other possibilities of healing that exist in our world beyond 20th century, 19th century, 18th century Western medicine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was a leap of faith to go this route. Yeah. But what was so amazing about it was that it was it. It was founded, the founder of National Institutes of Whole Health, Georgiana Donatio, is one of only two Nightingale nurses in the United States. She founded this program in the mid-70s. Oh. So she was already way ahead, way ahead of the game uh-huh. when it came to looking at people and their health and their wellness in a very holistic manner. And that's yeah. what I was searching for. And when I was working at the hospital the same patients kept coming back in Mm. and they kept having the same issues and they were following the directions and they just weren't getting better. And I kept thinking there's something wrong with this whole picture. Something Mm -hmm. else is going on here. Something's missing. Now, Jennifer, did you find that having the nurse, the RN, um, knowledge benefited you as you moved into to whole health as a whole health yes, educator? Absolutely. absolutely. Yes. 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 Because I can, when you're a nurse, you learn to assess people just by really just by looking at them. You know, the first thing we do is look at your color and yeah. you can't help it after a while. You just kind of, 
you just sort of have this intuitive, you know, thing, and you just look at somebody, and I can just look at somebody and think to myself, they just don't look well. And that could not, that doesn't always mean a physical illness, but you just get a sense that there's something there that that's bothering them. And I would say, you know, I'm often right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after I get to know somebody, um, of course, you don't just go up and say, hey, what's wrong? But you can, you know, you can get a lot of good information from people just by asking them, you know, particular questions mm-hmm. about themselves and they're willing yeah. to share. And right. um, my goal is always to lead someone or to leave someone with a piece of information that may just open their minds a bit mm-hmm. and move them yeah. in a direction that maybe they had not considered before. Right. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I think, I think opening someone's mind to accept a different way of thinking is such a powerful tool to be able to move us into taking responsibility for our life, for our health. Yes. Absolutely. So many of us uh, grow up thinking, get a pill, get a pill, get a pill. And we're finding that that's not always the answer. You know, from there is there is a pill for almost every ill. I always say that there's a pill for every ill. And you are (laughs) right. Uh, We are. Yeah, well, there is. There's a pill for every ill. I mean, it. You can look at the big pharmaceutical companies and you can see that. Now, I'm a true believer in Western medicine. If you have to have yeah. something taken out, please go see your doctor. If you're in a car accident, thank goodness for shock right. trauma. Right? Yeah. I mean, we could not be without Western medicine. Absolutely. Yeah. But Western medicine is our acute care, right? It's our acute care system. It's, it's our yeah. sick care system. It's not a health care system. It's a right. sick care system. <laughs> but you're, well, you're we're going to stop here. Jennifer, I'm going to ask you to stop here, and we're going to come back with more about accepting that responsibility of health for ourselves and you sharing some of the tools that you have learned through your years of uh, a whole health educator. So I hope that you, my listeners out there, will stay tuned so that you'll be equipped to move through and start taking that responsibility that's so important for you. Transformational coach, motivational speaker, and author Joyce Buford returns after this short break. Close your eyes and imagine living your life without limits. Where would you go? Who would you meet? What would you do? During an Uncover Your Hidden Genius session, you will discover what's keeping you from living your life with purpose, passion, and fulfillment of your potential. You'll get a clear vision of the steps you need to take to uncover your hidden genius so that you can live a life without limits. Sessions can be done over the phone, Skype, or in person. Find out more at www.JoyceBufordEmpowers.com or by calling 903-287-0747. Tokinet Radio has partnered with one of the largest travel booking engines in the world to offer savings of 15 to 30 percent or more on hotel booking fees through our own web portal, www.bestradiotravel.com. Discover the discount you can receive by going to bestradiotravel.com forward slash Joyce, J-O-Y-C-E, to see for yourself. This is a custom booking site for the listeners of my show through TogiNet Radio. We have negotiated special rates at over 650,000 hotels worldwide to save our customers money. Our members leverage our massive buying power to save thousands of dollars by booking with us. 
bestradiotravel.com can beat the best prices offered by any other major travel booking website. Please go to bestradiotravel.com forward slash joys, sign up, and enjoy the discounts. This is bestradiotravel.com forward slash Joyce, J-O-I-C-E. Welcome back to this segment of Second Win. Joyce Buford, the author of Effortless Happiness, continues in this segment to share insights that will help you live a life of greater purpose and filled with happiness. Now here's our host, author and coach, Joyce Buford. Welcome back. We are talking with Jennifer Crisp today. And she is the founder of A Bridge to Wholeness because her passion is, of course, blending health and wellness together. So you go through the more traditional medicine, and now you're also blending the whole health, taking more responsibility for your health. And so yeah. before break, we um, talked about her Lyme disease, which she was eventually diagnosed with, and how she transitioned through that. Transition is not always negative. It's positive because on the other side, you find answers and you find total freedom. And so anyway, Jennifer, um, I said before the break that we were going to come back and you were going to offer us some tools that we could use to deal with some of the challenges. So I'm ready. Got my pen in my hand. (laughs) <laughs> good, good. So I just want to say, we'll, we'll finish up quickly with the Lyme. I did two and a half years of treatment, and that included some Western medicine with antibiotics, as well mm-hmm. as herbs and supplements. So marrying the two together. And that, that was really important. And I am in remission, and I stay that way by putting myself first in my health and wellness. And mm-hmm. because of that, I want to talk about some tools that your listeners can start to utilize, and they're simple. They're so simple, and they're with us all the time. So the first thing that you want to become aware of is that your your self-care is your health care. That's your first tool. Your self-care is your health care, and that means that you put yourself in the center of that and you are your own patient or client. And if you can do that and understand that that is not selfish, then you're on your way. The second thing that you really need to understand is that you have to learn to be aware of being aware. That sounds a little strange, (laughs) but an example would be, You wake up in the morning, you have a very busy day, you have a meeting that's super important, you're nervous. Can you be aware of the fact that you are this way and stop for a moment and just say, I'm feeling this way. Tap into the feelings because, you know, our thoughts, you know, our thoughts are our thoughts, but our feelings are our feelings, right? They're they're separate Mm -hmm. things. Yeah. So when you're aware of the awareness of being a certain way, you can then utilize some other tools to bring you to a place of mindfulness inside of that. So some of those things could be you spend five minutes just deep breathing and being quiet. And in that quiet, is that done through meditation Is it done through prayer? Whatever it is that brings you to that place of deep quiet, deep down inside, in the heart center, that's where you go. Because that's where we have the opportunity to just move through those feelings, recognize them, accept them, be Mm -hmm. with them, and move forward. It will absolutely change your day. And mm-hmm. when you get into a practice of doing this on a daily basis, it's great. 
it, it just leads to the next thing. So <laughs> food, I believe there's four things that are super important as medicine. That's food, movement, connection, and community, and what that means to you. So the day you have that crazy meeting, have you laid out your food the night before to know that you're going to have that healthy meal in the morning? Have you hydrated? You know, hydration. Lack of mm. hydration is the number one reason we get a headache, right? So if you're yes. not hydrated before you go into your busy day, how's your brain going to really function? So food mm. is medicine. Are we, get, are we feeding ourselves? Are we fueling our bodies or are we just feeding our feelings? So thinking about food as actual medicine is super important, especially nowadays. Keeping it very simple and clean. So clean food means a clean mind, a clean brain. So just including, making sure you're including the fruits and the vegetables in your day that allow your brain to stay happy. Because when we feed ourselves just processed foods all the time, we actually set up a, uh, a loop in our system and you feed your stomach, so you fed your feelings, mm -hmm. and you're, but you're not feeding your actual brain. So your brain actually sends another signal down to your stomach and says, excuse me, um, where's the nutrition <laughs> piece of this? Uh, I, 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 I got the sugar I could get out of it and it's a quick fix, but there's nothing long term in here. So you're not going to do well at this meeting today. Uh, so think of, of feeding yourself some good protein along with some good fruit in the morning, uh, whether that be uh, a yogurt, um, you know, egg, some type of protein that's going to stick with you. And mm -hmm. uh, try, really try to avoid the, the donuts and the bagel. If you're going to eat a bagel, put some peanut butter or almond butter on there because it's good fat and good protein. So the next thing I want to say is obviously connection. Connection to other people, connection to your passion, connection to your heart, to your own well-being. Connection is paramount as we move through the day. Do we take the time as we are driving our cars to literally send a good thought to the person coming down the other side of the road? Oh, I love That's that. That's connection. <laughs> That's I love connection. That. Yes, instead of mm -hmm. honking the horn and get out of the way, the person who cuts you off, to send them a kind thought versus something angry. Because when you send the kind thought, you stay centered, you stay grounded, you stay heartfelt. When you go into anger, it sets up the stress response, the physical stress response in the body. And that means fight or flight. And do you want to walk into the office already in that condition? No. So sending out thoughts of gratitude, of kindness, goes a long way in you setting up your own day. Mm -hmm. So this is just, this is, these things are so simple, but they, are. they take practice. They take practice. <laughs> And finally, being in community. What does being in community mean for you? Do you have family that surrounds you? Or do you have a family that eh, is not particularly good to be around? Mm -hmm. Choose no. another community. Choose a community that supports you, that loves you, that believes in you. That's your community. And we can have a few of those, just like you were saying, Joyce. You go every Wednesday night to choir practice, mm -hmm. and it feeds your soul. It, you come out of there, and you feel as if you've been connected inside that community, right? You're right. Yeah. Uh, yes. It's a, it's a big release for about. me. I can go in there stressed, perhaps because of the day. It's been a very busy day. And then it's just like when I start singing, it just goes, whoo. And, you know, it's so interesting you say that because we're coming out that the science now behind these types 
of rituals, if you want to call them that, connection, mm-hmm. community, mindfulness, they're now basing this in evidence, which is so fascinating. We are finally getting to the point where science is backing up the the vibrational healing of music. Oh, science yeah. Science is backing up energy energy healing, the touch the touch of the hand on the body. Mm-hmm. We are beginning to understand this. Acupuncture for years was frowned upon because mm-hmm. that was just that woo-woo stuff. We know, based in science now, that meridians actually exist inside the body, and that's what the acupuncturist taps into. Mm-hmm. We know these things now exist, which is so exciting. There's tons of new brain science being looked at every day and the amount of information coming out about how our brains work and the connection between our gut and our brain and our feelings and our thoughts is phenomenal. We're in a mm-hmm. great place here in the 21st century. So the practice of mindfulness overall is obviously what I am talking about. Right. Right. You know, I'm pretty excited now that I'm in the in the um, um, transition period, age wise, that they're mm-hmm. putting so much focus on your brain is not where it has to stay. You can feed it and change it and grow it yep. and heal yep. it. And I mean, for years we've accepted it as, oh yeah, this is what happens. We forget, we forget. And there's ways now that you can feed that brain so you don't forget as much. You know, Absolutely. It's, it's a healing, which is just so healing. hopeful. It, it I is. Think it's ex- I'm so glad I came now. <laughs> no, oh, so absolutely. I- oh, we are, yes, we're in, we are in such a great place. Now, on the other side of that, we have a lot of the technology that we're dealing with, with the younger people, with the social oh, media and the, you know, the, the connection to the computers and the phones, et cetera. And there is a disconnect that has begun. And I know that speaking with many other practitioners, we feel mm-hmm. that the anxiety levels uh, are very high in the younger people. Um, yes. A lot of depression. We're seeing a lot more suicide. And so now is the time for us to bring this awareness to them as well. Practitioners are very concerned about this uh, Mm -hmm. during this time. So sharing connection and community, especially those of us who are a little more mature, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's our opportunity to reach out and connect with these these younger people. It's, Mm -hmm. It's just so important. Because we have the whole opioid epidemic that we're dealing mm-hmm. with, uh, mm-hmm. which has been, you know, really pretty severe and will continue, I'm afraid, for quite a number of years. But you can take these tools, that food is medicine, uh, connection, community, movement, the awareness of being aware, the taking the minute to just stop and say, whoa, let me just tap in here and see what's going on in my gut. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. What what are the feelings? And just could we get the recognition? Yeah. Could we talk about movement a little bit more? Are you yeah. as far as movement? Are, are you talking um, um, some of the yogas or that, or just for the I person that lives movement, in the country yes. walking? Yes, I consider movement any type of movement at all that gets you to a place of connection and community because Uh walking is the easiest type of movement that we can do. It puts us out in nature. We Uh know that 20 minutes of being outside a day increases, boosts our immune system tremendously. Just being outside for 20 minutes. Can you imagine that? Enough (laughs) of an immune booster to keep you healthy? No. Come on. That's that's nothing. Yeah. (laughs) That's nothing. That's nothing. Yes. <laughs> and movement. When you sing, when you sing, you are moving because oh, your body that's... is in rhythm. Oh, yeah. And by nature, by nature, we are rhythmic creatures. We cannot help it. We always uh-huh. move in rhythm. So singing is also movement because we're moving the breath 
through the body. Yes. So when you go to that practice on Wednesday night, the reason you feel better when you come out is because you've been deep breathing, which lowers blood pressure, right? Mm -hmm. Clears yes. the brain, circulates yeah. the blood. I mean, mm -hmm. all of this is very physiological. So any kind of movement, your yoga classes, your Pilates, your whatever it is that you want to do, jogging, running, makes mm. no difference. If you work oh. in the garden, makes no difference. If you're chasing after the grandkids, that's yes. movement. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> yeah. So, well, so that's my why gardening I is pull movement that way. My gardening is pulling weeds. I love to pull weeds. Go. Now, isn't that a crazy thing? I just love to pull weeds. <laughs> it's probably very, it's probably very meditative. It is. It's successful. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, you feel like you've, yeah, you've, you've accomplished something. You, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so yeah. funny. I know. Now, I know. It's a, my husband comes home every night. The first thing he does is put his briefcase down goes outside because he's been in an office all day and mm -hmm. walks around the yard, checks the flowers, waters them, goes to the fig tree to see if we have any figs, checks <laughs> the pond. That, that's, his, that's his release from the day. And I don't bother him while he's doing that. That's, yeah. his, that's his opportunity to come in and reconnect. Yes, yes. It's grounding almost, walking on the ground. Yeah. Does he do bit? Does Absolutely. he do it barefoot? That would even no, be better. No, he doesn't. He, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. But he, I mean, it's like I have to tell this story quickly. He he loves fig trees, and he planted the fig tree, and something came and ate the roots. <clears throat> and he he literally he. I was sitting in the family room watching the news. He came in with the tree in his hand, this big six oh, foot no. tree with the roots <laughs> stricken, and he walks into the room and he says. Look, somebody ate my fig tree. And I just looked at him. I said, can you take it outside, please? But, I mean, that's how connected he is to plants. That's yeah. his mm -hmm. connection. That's his awareness. That's his passion. Yeah. So yeah. it was upsetting to him. And yeah. consequently, he planted another tree, of course. But this is what I'm talking about. When, when things that you are passionate about are part of your everyday existence and you make the time for it. You purposely schedule your singing. You purposely schedule your own self care. Even if that's 20 to 30 minutes, it can make the biggest difference in the way your immune system functions. Mm. Yeah, that's great. You've given us and some that's really what health and good tools is about, here. Yeah. Um, that we can really put into practice because they're not hard. Yes. They're just no. common sense. It's okay. Well, it's okay to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you all permission to take care <laughs> of yourself. Yes. Because as women, we often fall short in that department. Don't we? Yes, we do, don't we? We, we give it away we... and give it away and give it away, and the bank account gets emptied out and we have nothing to pull from mm -hmm. yeah I'd like for you to share a little bit about your work with the bridge to wholeness yes they, I, they, um, you have a website about, Nate, that, I do correct? it's called abridgetowholeness.com and what I do is I actually bridge the gap between western medicine practitioners and alternative or complementary medicine practitioners through education and awareness. Mm -hmm. And nobody else is out there doing that. <laughs> oh. and no, there's no other organization I know. There's lots of organizations of just uh, integrated practitioners or what we call functional medicine doctors or we have holistic practitioners or whatever. But there's yes. nobody out there trying to bridge the gap. And I was like, this this is what helped me. This is what helped me to get through the line was, was mm. to combine some antibiotic and Western medicine things along with these complementary modalities. Mm -hmm. And why not educate each other on all these different modalities that are out there 
let the docs know, hey, you know, you have a patient who's addicted to opioids. They're having migraines all the time or they have severe back pain. Acupuncture could be very helpful. So maybe uh-huh. introducing them to a different modality may help them also shift into self-care uh-huh. in a new way. Yeah. So we're really about educate, educating each other and bringing awareness to the fact that we are in the 21st century now and things need to shift. We don't have to stay locked inside one system of mm. what I call sick care. It's not, as I said before, it's not health care. So why not educate each other about all of these different things? And there are mm. many medical doctors out there who are open to this. But the system is, is a bit challenging for them to allow that to happen. So we want yeah. to you know, invite them in and say, hey, what's going on inside this world of acupuncture or chiropractic or craniosacral or uh, Reiki or um, kinesiology or uh, body talk? I mean, the the modalities go on and on forever. (laughs) There's so many of them. Yeah. So so that's, that's really what we're about. So you have the website, but you also have a podcast. Do you kind of cover the same on both? Um, do you have how do, yeah, how does so your they, podcast the, work? Yeah, the website is really for healthcare practitioners. So those of you who okay. are in healthcare, I am definitely looking for podcast guests, and I uh-huh. also have a quiz on my website that I would really love you to take. We are trying to gather enough information to see which direction the organization needs to move in. And it's questions that have that healthcare practitioners have to deal with all the time with insurance or non-insurance, et cetera. Lots yeah. of different questions. Um, the podcast is educational. It's for the general public. And we actually talk to practitioners and we ask them questions like, tell me what happens when somebody walks into your office. Mm-hmm. What, do, what, what do you expect when you get an acupuncture treatment, what happens during craniosacral? Do they sit? Do they lie on a table? Do they stand? We actually educate people about what happens when they go into an office. And it's mm-hmm. not just holistic modalities. We talk to doctors as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also, I've also spoken with a healthcare attorney talking about the elderly and all the healthcare issues they deal with in a legal manner. So we yes. cover a wide variety of subjects, but we always want you to leave with understanding something that you may not have understood before. Mm, yeah. I have a, a friend whose uh, daughter is uh, experiencing Lyme disease. And when we were visiting earlier, you said you have a a program or a podcast that's coming on to specifically yes. talk about the disease? Yes, that should be up in probably a couple of weeks, I would say by yeah. mid-October. Uh, yes, it's, I actually interviewed, well, I didn't interview. I actually had a discussion with Wendy Evans, who is a physical therapist, and then mm. some, and she also has Lyme. And she was mm. diagnosed a year before me, and so the whole episode talks about signs and symptoms of Lyme, Uh and we want people to know that they're not crazy. (laughs) Oh, that's nice. That's good. Relief. Yeah. No, seriously. And as we began speaking, we realized that our signs and symptoms were so similar. In fact, we both developed a rash uh, that started on our feet and began moving up our legs. And I didn't think anyone else had ever had that type of situation with Lyme. And here I was speaking to her and just found that out. I said, right. Wendy, I cannot believe this. Yeah. So yeah. It, uh, we just, which we found out was uh, one of the uh, co-infections called Bartonella. So um, we just, mm. we were like, wow. And it was yeah. also, it, it also reinforced our own, you know, our own belief in the importance of being treated and getting the care, whatever mm-hmm. route you decide. She did more the Western right. and I did yeah. more of uh, both. Yeah. 
So, yeah. Well, Jennifer, that we are coming to the close of our hour, and I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed our time together. Um, I really feel like the listeners have walked away with some great tools, some a plan almost of how they yeah. can reclaim their self care and know that it is they're the ones responsible really for their health, not their yeah. doctor. It's not outside of right. ourselves. But you've given us a great place to start. So I really do appreciate and thank you for that. Well, thank you. It was an honor to be on your um, podcast. I I really appreciate the time and being able to share this with your listeners. Well, you know, this is going to be in a health series. And so uh, that I like to do periodically different series. And I think this will be a great program. It'll be very, very helpful for those people suffering through and knowing the the necessary need to blend um, yes. the different types of treatment. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being So here. thank you very much. Thank you. Uh-huh. So as we go into our week, I want you to start looking at your life. How are you going to implement the tools that Jennifer has presented to us today. Also, next um, coming up in October, I will be telling you about an interesting opportunity that you will have to come to a webinar to hear about my new course that is coming out in mid-October, and hope you'll be tuning into that so you can learn more about the transitions of divorce. So, I really appreciate that we're able to bring such interesting people to you, such as Jennifer has been. I love spreading the word, and she's certainly doing great work in her life, all because of a transition. So I want to thank you. Decide what you're going to be this week. Decide how you're going to change your life. Decide that you are the most important. Thank you. Joyce Buford returns next week at the same time for another edition of Second Wind. Through the Joyce Buford Empowerment System, women are receiving the support they need through their transitions and are able to reclaim their true purpose with confidence. They receive the tools they need to map out new lives. You can find out more about her coaching services at JoyceBufordEmpowers.com.